Hello, my name is Andrea. Normally, I do videos about animation, but today I decided that I'm going to sew myself a jacket because, you know, that sounds like fun. So before I get into it, I want to let you know that I just got into sewing. I do not know what I'm doing. I do not have a dress form. I do not have a sewing machine. And I decided I'm just going to sew this whole thing by hand. So yeah, fun. <laughs> so before I can just make a jacket, I need a pattern. And so for that, I got this book. Um, this is actually like available online for free. I'll put a link in the description. It is the Keystone Jacket and Dress Cutter by Charles Hecklinger. This book was published in 1895. And it's basically all information on like everything you could possibly want to make in terms of like uh, jackets and dresses and stuff from the era. So the first thing I had to do is, you know, measure myself. And then uh, once I did that, I could go ahead and start drafting uh, the basic body block. Now the instructions in this book were pretty straightforward. Um, you start by drafting kind of like this center back uh, length and then you figure out all this stuff like this is kind of step one this is step step two if you want to do it yourself uh, you can now because i uh, have a cintiq i drafted this on my computer because i didn't feel like trying to deal with this whole drawing on paper and screwing up and having to redraw it Okay, here's what I've drafted so far. It looks pretty nice. I don't know if it fits me, but uh, I've drafted it. I followed the instructions. I have like this guides layer that kind of shows all uh, the important like measurements that I needed to do, like and markings that you had to label stuff. Yeah, it's got some darts here. It's got panels. Um, when you draft it, they like overlap each other. So I'm gonna have to like separate those out when I print it out, but for now it's fine. But I'm just going to go to the book and change the pattern a bit and see uh, what fun uh, type of jacket I wanna make now that I have the, the basic body, uh, the waist they say in the book now that I have the waist done. Yeah, let's uh, go be creative. Okay, so I have looked through the book and I have come up with some stuff. Um, firstly, I thought it would be really nice to have some like extra flair in the back. Um, that would be fun. So that's like this here and it, it shows kind of like, this is where like the normal one is and then you just extend it out to here and then this is uh the side piece but it's upside down um it's upside down in this picture um and you just extend that out too but you don't really extend out the rest for this and then on in addition to that i'm also going to do a cutaway uh front um so instead of it closing all the way down it kind of has like a couple buttons here and then it cuts like away and I'll have to reduce the number of darts to one. Hopefully this won't be too difficult. I also have to do the collar and uh, sleeves and they are on this thing somewhere. I'll, I'll figure that after I do the body. Okay, so this is what I have um, now. I have done my alterations. Um, I put the flare in the back here and I've reduced the number of darts, done this cutaway, and I also like added the, the collar thing because um, I figured out I needed to do that. So now I'm just going to go ahead and print out my pattern and uh, let's see if this thing fits me. 
Now, since my pattern was definitely way too big to print off on one sheet of paper, I went ahead and broke it up into little parts and made some little marks for myself so I can figure out how it fits together. And I labeled each side so I know which ones go together. It was a bunch of cutting and taping. Now when you make a pattern yourself, it's a really good idea to test it and make sure it actually fits before you cut into the actual fabric. So I bought some of this unbleached cotton muslin. It's really cheap. I got it for like $2 a yard and I traced on the pattern pieces. So here we are, we have all of the pieces laid out. We have the two uh, center front pieces, the side, side back, back pieces, and of course the collar. And again, I don't have the sleeves done yet because I want to make sure that the waist fits before I draft the sleeves. Obviously, before you sew it, you have to pin all the pieces together. I found this was actually a lot harder than I expected it to be. You have to make sure that the line lines up perfectly on each side. So when you poke the pin through, you have to check it on the other side too, to make sure it's still on the line. Okay, let's get real. I don't know what I'm doing, so I need to learn how to sew. This is the Household Sewing with Home Dressmaking by Bertha Banner, and it is also available online. This book was published in uh, 1898. I went through here and I read the whole section on stitches. We learn about the um, running stitch and by the way guys this book is for children um, yes the running stitch goes in and out straight through the fabric it is fast because you can do multiple stitches at a time the problem is that the fabric can bunch up and it's not that strong because there's only one thread running through on the other hand there's the back stitch and it's strong but it's really slow with each stitch you double back creating a loop Every stitch is therefore anchored, and the fabric can't bunch up at all. Now, for my mock-up, I decided to do what is called the running back stitch. It's kind of a combination of the two stitches I was talking about. It starts with a back stitch, and then you fill your needle with running stitches, so it's fast, but still anchored. I learned about this from Bernadette Banner, a YouTuber who is pretty much the reason I decided to do this whole sewing thing, so if you like this video at all, please go check out her channel. After finishing half of my mock-up, I decided to try it on and quickly discovered that it doesn't fit me, like, at all. I can't even fit my shoulder through the armhole. So, back to my draft. Okay, so rather than changing things all willy-nilly, I thought I would look at the drafting instructions and try and figure out where, where I went so terribly wrong. Because clearly I didn't measure myself correctly, but what measurements are wrong, I don't know. I went through the instructions and I noticed uh, the drafting instructions have you like measure down to the waist first. So that's like the center back measurement here. And then we find this line by measuring back up 
the length under the arm. And then with this line, you can, like you see here, in the next step, you can draft the armhole. So that's the first thing I'm gonna change. I'm going to adjust basically this line so that it moves the whole line down and we get a new arm's eye that hopefully my arm will fit in this time. So I'm gonna do that and see how it goes. Okay, so after I made the changes to the draft, I went ahead and traced my new pattern pieces onto my old mock-up so that I wouldn't have to make an entirely new mock-up. I could just um, make the appropriate changes and see if it fits me. After I traced it on, I went ahead and unpicked all those seams and then sewed the new seams together and voila, new mock-up. Let's see if it fits. No, no, it does not fit at all. Um, the shoulder still doesn't fit through the armhole and I'm not sure if it's just the shoulder, but it's not fitting all the way to the back. It's, uh, yeah, it does not fit. Back to the drawing board. So when I was drafting this, I ended up having problems with this part. Uh, let's see, can you see this? So the, the way they explain the math is so weird. It's because it's like old fashioned. It says like, now on the long arm of the square, we find what size is given on the two thirds scale opposite the 10 inch size of blade point. And it's just like, what? Two thirds scale opposite? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm so confused. Okay, I'm back. I uh, think I figured this out and they kind of explain it here by giving an example. They talk about the size of blade, which is 10 inches. And, and it's one of the measurements that you have to figure out when you're uh, measuring yourself. And you have to change those measurements to your own uh, measurements for this. But with the example, they say that for 10 inches, uh, the size is 15. And they talk about two thirds scale. And I was like, oh, 10 is two thirds of 15. So what you do is you take your blade measurement and you multiply it by three, and then you divide it by two so that your blade is two thirds of this measurement that you want. And they say here, or half of 30, and that's, that's them explaining. It's like you times three and then divide it by half. Ah, uh, why do you explain it like this? It's so annoying, <laughs> but I think I figured it out. Now, I also found this information, which is really cool. Um, this is in another one of his books. This is, I wish this was in the Keystone Guide, uh, but it is in the Keystone Systems in Coat, Vest, and Trousers. And this is the square that he was talking about. He's talking about a long arm of the square, and it's the tool that he uses to uh, figure out fractions. So that's part of the confusion here. He explains like his wording for using the square here. So that helps. I wish this was in the book I was using because that would have been really helpful. Okay, now that I've figured out that like whole math issue that I was having, I fixed the armhole, I think. Um, at least now it looks more round. Let me show you what it looked like before. Let's turn this off and this. See how it's like squished? That measurement was how to find this like L in here. And I moved it back. So before it was like too far this way because I didn't know how to do that calculation. And then it also affected this uh, zero zero line. So now the armhole looks more round and <laughs> hopefully that fixes everything. The new pieces are like drastically different from the old pieces, if you can see this. So I have to cut new pieces.
guess what? It didn't fit. Um, I did this alteration, as you can see, now it basically fits. Look at that, amazing. I basically just cut it in the armhole and spread it out on the front panel, and I sewed it together <laughs> with this extra, like, two whole inches in the front. As you can see here, I'm holding it up to show what it used to look like. It was basically all like wrong. It's weird. So I extended it in the front there and it fits now. Now I just have to figure out what to do to the draft so that it fits in the draft. Okay, so after I did my alterations, I went back to the book. I tried to figure out where the heck I went wrong. After the main waist draft, there is like extra information for different body types. And I basically found out that I am uh, longer in the front than in the back. And they call that the erect form right here. Um, the drawing is on the other side of the page over here. Um, there's another one for the stooping form where your back is longer than your front. And you see here, the back goes higher and the front is lower. But um, for me, because I was adding so much extra to the, the front, I added to the front here. So here is my new and improved draft. You can see that the front is higher than the back. The back I also made just like a little bit higher. And I'm pretty confident that this one fits me. So this time I'm gonna go ahead and not just make half, I'm gonna make the full thing. I'm gonna make both halves. Wish me luck. And voila, a mock-up that finally more or less fits. It's not perfect, but I mean, I can work with this. So here are a couple of my problems with it still. With the waist, it could be just a little bit lower and the darts in the front go too high. So I quickly did those changes and now I finally have my pattern. still need to do sleeves. Okay, it's time to draft me some sleeves. I've returned to the book and here are the instructions. Uh, it looks kind of like this. This is where you start and then you add uh, this other stuff and hopefully um, I make something that works. Uh, there's also some changes that I can do to make it more full and change like where it connects. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm doing. Uh, I've heard that sleeves are the devil, so kind of scared, but hopefully, hopefully it works. One thing that's really good is that I finished drafting the body first. Uh, because you have to use the armhole measurement to draft the sleeve. So hopefully this will make it easier for me. Um, we'll see. I'm also going to make it for my arm's length because usually sleeves are too short for me. So let's get started with this. Okay, so one thing I learned about sleeves is the wrist measurement needs to be not your actual wrist measurement because or else then you can't get your hand through the wrist hole. You have to make it at least the size of your hand and 
For me, I'm going to make it a little bit looser because it is a jacket. Also for your elbows, you don't want to do it with a straight elbow. You want to at least make it big enough so that you can bend your elbow in the sleeve. Okay, so I've drafted the sleeves. I used um, these guides to draft it. And then I went ahead and made some alterations. If you can see here, I did this to it. So I shortened the undersleeve and I lengthened the oversleeve. And this makes it so that the seam is just more tucked um, back further, closer to the armpit instead of like in plain sight. I also made it like a tiny bit taller. I was thinking it would be nice to have like just a couple of pleats at the very top. So I just made it a little bit taller. I didn't make it huge. Uh, there's definitely some huge sleeves in the book that I could do, but I didn't want that. I just want a couple small pleats. So as you can see here, they have you draft the undersleeve on top of the oversleeve. So these are actually two separate pieces, but the way it works is it has to like wrap around your arm. So this one actually has to be flipped. So you have to flip it and then this will wrap around properly. This seam will line up with this one and then this one will line up with this one. It's like a sandwich and your arm goes in the middle. So I went ahead and took my pattern and made a mock-up of the sleeve. For some reason, I didn't take any footage of me sewing together the two parts that make up the sleeve, but here it is. Now because this sleeve is drafted with a bend in it, it's easy to figure out which side it goes on, because elbows bend forward, not backwards. And it looks like there is a little bit of extra fabric just like I wanted to gather together in the shoulder. And it looks like it might just fit. Hooray! Now I need to pin it so the bottom of the arm's eye lines up with the bottom of the sleeve opening. You can see that the sleeve dips down in the armpit and you can line up this lowest point with the side seam. I've also got the highest point lined up with the shoulder pinned together and I'm going to pin the rest of it so all the extra fabric ends up in the shoulder so there's no extra bulk in the armpit. This bit of extra fabric needs to be plated somehow. Maybe I'll just sew the bottom on before I try and figure that out. So I probably should have been using a thimble for this, especially since sewing these pleats make it so I have to push through many layers of fabric. But whatever, I'm a beginner so I'm bound to do stupid things. Here are the pleats I did at the top of the shoulder. After I did them, I kind of decided it probably would have been a better idea if they didn't all go in the same direction, but rather the front and the back pleats go towards the top of the shoulder but I can figure that out in the final one. Amazingly, it actually fits. So yeah, I'm really, really happy with this. 
I've never had a jacket with bent sleeves before and it's actually super comfortable. It also fits really nicely around my shoulder. I have a lot of range of motion despite how fitted this is. This is amazing. This process of making my own pattern was really fun and way harder than I expected. Now I can start on the real thing. But since this video is already pretty long, I'm going to save that for another video. But I did do this drawing of the design. It features that nice cutaway thing and the flare in the back. I never did add the collar to my mock-up. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me in the end. But I had this idea to make it pointed, so that should be fun. I also want to do some fun cuffs on it, but I didn't really figure that out yet, so wish me luck. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's not my normal animation content, but I'm not gonna lie, I've been kind of obsessed with watching sewing videos lately. So let me know down in the comments if you enjoyed this sewing stuff. And if you want to see more of my videos, make sure to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!